Leading the haka is an important part of being an All Black. I can't lie and say it's not scary. It is scary, but during the anthem, I start prepping up with my voice. I sing our anthem hard as I like to and passionate about that. Try to warm my throat up. When the other team's anthem's on, I'm humming. So I always stand next to Cody and I'm standing there going, hmm. Straight after the anthem, Pete Gallagher runs on and gives me a water. Give my neck a quick squeeze to get the hairs down. And then, I don't know, something out of bodily comes from it. I feel the mana of all the past leaders. I feel the black jersey on my, on my skin and yeah, it's out of body. The haka is something that's unique in world sport and it's unique obviously in rugby and I guess we're the lucky ones uh, to be able to perform it. It's a symbol or a display of who we are as New Zealanders. Different cultures, different people coming together and you're going into a gladiatorial sport it's effectively us saying we're ready and this is who we are. I've always enjoyed doing haka and to be the kaya for some games is, is, is a huge honour for me and my family and my whanau and um, definitely for my tribe, Ngātika Nunu. It's an important role, but we're just the, the start, we're the heartbeat. The team towers above the individual. You know, no one is more important than anyone. And so when you understand that the legacy is the great power, it's far more intimidating than any opponent. Uh, then you enter a brotherhood and you enter an arena of, of, of activity that's special. You know, it's not about you. It's about honouring the traditions that have come together and made this team great. Something that we often do when we just move in our cities. This is a bit of tough yakka that we do. Only the tough ones come out here. Yo, some of the. How you gonna do it? Guys, we made it. We're on the plane. Love it. Yeah, you need to watch out for those guys. <laughs> we're a professional rugby team, but we're just blokes on tour that play footy. You can clap fast, and it just like this, like goes yeah. like. This. <laughs> we love banter. We love playing cards. You know, anything to stay connected with the brothers, that's, that's something that we always try and do. <laughs> Things can be very funny on tour, man. This here is just our beautiful room. Uh... <laughs> and, and you get really close with some friends and people that you might not know. <laughs> to have each other and to be connecting, 
It's really awesome to do that. And what is vital for me is that where we finished at the rugby championship is where we start this tour. We've got to understand what we are, who we are, and how we want to play, and we've got to go out there with a smile on our face and execute. And we've learned that we're not quite there yet. We let our guard down, and we don't want to do that. We want to grow, and we are going to grow. And the question is whether you want to come along for the ride. Blacks found a winning run towards the end of the southern winter, but questions remain to be answered on this northern tour. Brody Ratelli will score the opening try. The All Blacks looking like they're taking control, but now the ball's loose. It's been towed ahead by Yamasawa. He's in. And suddenly, back to back tries have Japan breathing right down their neck. And Caleb Clark just bounces off a few tackles. Great way to start the second half. Kicks charge. Oh, beautifully done. Boy, what a struggle this has been. Satoto wheeling and over. And the All Blacks do enough, but no more than that. A lot of work on for us, and uh, we know we need to get better in, but uh, yeah, we'll take the win, so. 38 31. By far the tightest margin ever between these two sides. International rugby is getting tough. We've got to roll our sleeves up. When we're away, there's a whole other team behind that no one sees that are away from home and who are under a huge amount of pressure to execute their role. I'm just on a little I guess there's like a core group of around 20. The role that I have is really about minimising disruptions to performance. Because it's home on the road, you want to try and create as much similarity every week. Even if it's a different environment that you're preparing and you still want to have the same tools. We could make it easier on ourselves by just asking the local people to provide, but that's not high performance. Logistically, people don't realise, you know, we're taking half of New Zealand with us. Hit pads, tackle shields, drones, tents, <laughs> everything. You know, coffee machine, scrub machine that probably only gets used maybe once a week. So while it's a burden in one sense and it takes a lot of creative logistical planning, it does provide, you know, a certainty. You know, Wales at Millennium Stadium in front of their own fans. The way they sing and how passionate they are, it was pretty special. I just think we we're ready to sort of ramp it up a little bit with, you know, we kept driving that we were trying to build some habits in some areas and continue to grow as a team. Ben, this jersey demands people every single time. We know what it looks like. With that, let's be smart. Brothers all three. One, two, three, brothers! I want to go out with a bang. I want to be remembered for being really consistent. Always played high level of rugby, played with passion, played with heart. I want to finish standing up, I want to finish strong. And Artie Savia, under all sorts of pressure, offloads beautifully to Aaron Smith. Two for the knock, boy! Two for the knock! You know, I thought we really wanted to make a statement in the Welsh game, and I thought we did that.
you know, Wayne Barnes's 100th test, and he came in the shed and the boys presented him, you know, an all black jersey. I wanted to congratulate you on your 100th test match. Um, we've just got a couple of bottles here from, from NZ and our 100 gamers have signed as well, so just an appreciation of our. Yeah. yeah. You know, he spoke, and it was, you know, that, that, that's the stuff I love about the game. I've had a chap who didn't kiss you with the All Blacks, as you probably know, um, particularly, at this, uh, particularly at this stadium. Um, but the way that you kind of allow us to be part of your little world is uh, really grateful, and this will uh, this is a really special touch. And um, as they say in, uh, in Wales, I think yaki da. So cheers, cheers. <laughs> right. As an All Black, you kind of have no right to think. I played good, I finally had a really good game, I can just chill now. That's when you got to stand up more and be more humble, more grateful. Our biggest goal as an All Black when we first make the team, we add to the legacy, we give it our best, and it's no different when we turn up to a place, we leave it spotless. That's what leaders got to do, and it's not always about going to tell a guy to broom. It's just through leading through example. When younger people see the leaders, the 100 test veterans, exhibiting behaviours like this, then it becomes infectious and you bleed black because you've seen the example and you want to live the example, so you begin to exhibit that yourself, take on those behaviours and they then manifest themselves as time-honoured traditions. My name is a poor teacher, and we've got to be great learners. For me, life as an All Black's changed throughout the years. The environment's changed significantly. Bit of a gym pick me up. Yeah, bro. Hell of a city. Look at that. Have a look up the road there. It's a fun environment. It's a high-pressure environment. Set. Go, Bruno. And we always try and get that balance right. We randomly come up with a kicking challenge after every training. Probably a punt or a grubber into Sparkle's truck there. Oh, you're... <gasps> Seriously. Game, eh? It's the last five minutes. Good. Oh! I'm a great believer that in, in high performance sport there's no room for PR. And in top level coaching there, there's no room if, if you're not authentic. So you've got to be who you are. Just that eight to. Oh! 50 to win. Any 50, eh? <laughs> this is a done deal. <laughs> Here we go. We've spent a lot of time together in hotels where the only company we've got is our own. <laughs> I'm demanding from the players that they have some balance because if they don't have balance and they're weak, then they'll burn out. And so I have to practice what I preach in that regard. I love switching on, switching off. I, I love getting out of my room and annoying people. He's just a good Kiwi guy. He's got a bit of humour. Who said Fozzie Bear? He's got a quick wit. If you come at him, you've got to have some heat. And then if you get him good, he'll be like, oh, what about that missed tackle at that scrum? Behind the scenes, the players probably describe me as being reasonably childish at times, immature at times. But that's OK, because that's, that's my way of relaxing. And as long as I get the balance right, that's fine. That's what preparation's about, isn't it? It's listening to things, figuring out what's relevant for us as a team, for you as an individual. And then once you've identified that, we start building. Last two times we've been here, what, what are our margins of victory? Eight and five. We're going to do it again. We're going to take our level up again. It's slow. I've always admired the Scots, because they're real tough. A lot of tension getting on the, off the bus there. You could, you could feel that we knew this was going to be another step up. All Blacks seemingly have got things back on track after a rocky start to the year. I can't wait. This test will be the goods. 
Scottish game was always going to be a, a tough one for me. I think they're, they're a tough team to beat up there. And it's about being decisive in the moment and then decisive to the next moment. One, two, three, brothers! Here we go! Here we go, boys! It's a given that whether you're in the 23 or not, uh, you're prepared to set them up to succeed. On it, on it, on it! Tolkiaho, he's close to the line, he is over! Nice boys! I was given the role to run water out, but also to have a, another perspective on the game from the sideline. Uh, the ball played for Talia. Get him out. So they're pulling scores from the fantasy catalogue. Lovely inside ball to Stuart Hogg. Chip and chase for Hogg. What a scored it. We're going to see a penalty try here. We start being really reactive yeah. and we stop seeing the real simple stuff that we should be seeing. Obviously being in all the meetings throughout the week, I understand the strategic sort of game plan and how we want to play. If I was just with our backs, I think we need to be a bit more decisive in choosing a way. And our middies, uh, they got to start offering more. <laughs> you, you don't want people to sit on an observation and give it to you afterwards if, you know, it could, could have an impact. Let's all choose a way and create more numbers. I reckon that's the message, eh? Whoever's on the sideline, I'll often ask them questions. What are you seeing? They have a really good view of the game. And often it's just one thing they pick up, but it's one thing that's really important. It's taken some desperate defence to hold Scotland to a three-point lead at half-time. Forwards, you've just got to really keep doing what you are doing but we've just got to make sure we get really, really smart and disciplined through it. And backs, we've got to get, make sure this forward pack has got a chance to go to some rucks, going forward, smack them, and then we're going to take those opportunities off that. OK? And it's really that simple. The brothers on three. One, two, three, brothers! Another pick, drive, and go by New Zealand! Well, they were tearing that Scotland defence. I was pleased with how we finished that. Oh, let's go! the All Blacks. Somewhere in this right, second the half, the momentum the changed. The All Blacks got it right when they needed to. Clearly today, we're spending a little bit of time looking back, but our main focus is everything we're doing is about getting ready for Saturday. I think players at this level are craving for insight and direction, and they want to go out very clear. Keep thinking about all the variables, and we stay skillful. That's our focus. Come on, no, don't look after them, mate. Make it hard for them. You know, ironically, it's um, the way they do that is by us listening first, because, you know, ultimately, I, I think they've got a lot of the answers inside themselves. So how have you found not playing? Definitely been tough, eh? Just going from being that guy to, like, not being picked. Here's a question for you, sir. So would you rather have not been picked and, like, got game time or being picked like you have, not have played as often, but you've been in the environment to, like, learn and soak it all up? Um, yeah, I, 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 like, questioned that a bit. First, like, I, like, coming into this environment was unreal. Like, I loved it, eh? It literally is everything you you dream about, being part of this, and it's like, this is the pinnacle of anything. What's more important? Is it playing footy or 
being part of the environment and I want it over. Uh, the build up was really good. It was Gaz's 100th test match. <laughs> He's been an inspirational All Black and someone who's got so much mana uh, in the All Blacks. Had some good determination. We sort of layered that in during the week that we want to put on a really good performance in that test match, you know, for Gaz. Whatever we go through on Saturday, we, we smile at and embrace the challenge. Eh? a proper test match and I tell you what I cannot wait for this brothers on three. One, two, three, brothers. Owen Farrell and Brody Retallick sharing the limelight test rugby's newest centurions it's a special milestone on one of the biggest days of the rugby year every time is an amazing time it's like anything, you train something, get to a point where you're comfy with it, and then you let the passion come and the mana come when it happens. I try to stay right in the middle so everyone can hear me. Some stadiums can be really loud. Yeah, rock and roll, Jet. If there's water break, we're allowed to run on. And you go to the backs. Yeah, I'll go to the fourth. Oh, there goes Tapani! Arlo Dolt! Arlo Dolt! And that's a gift! Arlo Dolt! Arlo Dolt! And New Zealand have been handed seven points. Just the perfect start to silence the crowd. What's up? Go, race, go, race! Some of the big fellas coming in. Cody Taylor's there. Has he got it down? And the referee says yes. For so much of that game, it wasn't the scoreboard. It was the fact that three years earlier, that team had, had outmuscled us in, in Japan. We have got scoreboard pressure. So our patience is key. Yep. And by all means, with advantages, have a crack. And there we were on their home patch. And I thought we played really well. And Twickenham is shell shocked. The thing that I love, and this will sound funny, is that the mistakes we're making are really positive mistakes. They probably only need one or two things. You know, anything else is just going to make us coaches feel like we've been really good, but it's going to just just create clutter in their mind. Our race to the game line with the ball, it's creating everything. As backs receive and pitches the kick, or to run, or you keep doing it again the start back. Brothers on three. One, two, three, brothers! One, two, three, brothers! There's going to have to be a second half of some resolve and no little skill from England, certainly better than they showed in the first half. As a team, we're trying really hard. We're working harder than other years around our physical, our mental, our game plan. And Ioane gets the try. Yeah, I was super proud of the boys, eh? Um, I was a little disappointed for the last 10. <laughs> but if I'll be honest, I was, I was gutted. Marcus Smith now is through. Smith then with a stick. Ah! And they got over, and it looks like they got it down. <laughs> That's a great example of how quickly games can shift. It's uh, Borden Barrett who's off. There we are, something from this game, and actually nine minutes to go. Happened just like that, and, and that's how brutal Test footy can be. If you make a mistake, you, you pay the price. The tackle from Whitelock. Young's again. Stewart! The game remains alive. We were under the pump big time without the ball. Obviously, with 14 players, it's, uh, it's tough. England are within five. The clock says we're approaching the final minutes. Up there, Come on. Stewart! Oh. Yes. Can you see?
seen a comeback of this sort of magnitude. Come on. What England will do. Will they be satisfied with the draw? They are. Marcus Smith fires it into touch. I don't think in anyone's mind we thought that they would kick the ball out. Is it the game? Yeah. A few boos from the crowd who wanted the win. They're like disappointed after the England test, you know, we were up on a big lead and let them back in. Obviously that last nine minutes was a little bit of a continuation of some, a couple of little trends we'd had during the year. It was just disappointing we didn't get a job done and get a win for Guz. You know, in the shed afterwards, you know, the English boys come in and that's always good about the Northern Tour. There's jersey swaps and to see all those boys, the ex-All Blacks that were in the shed, Jerome and DC and Richie and Conrad. You, you want to go and win everything, and but when you don't, our job is to try to be as real in our assessment of where we're at as possible. I came away from the Northern Tour thinking, OK, well, in terms of our big rocks, we've moved them considerably. We should never think that we've moved them enough, and, you know, I promise everyone we'll keep moving them. Thanks very much. But I do know that we've got a lot of confidence in the direction we're going. Thank you very much. 2022 as a year, it was it was a trip, man. It was a roller coaster. To go through all that pain and adversity, only good can come from it. You know, we lost the um, July series to Ireland, but after that, we we were pretty successful. They have stopped Argentina by 53 to three, and they won at Ellis Park. You know, you got to be grateful for that, and we got some amazing wins. This will be your last year. What do you reckon you'll miss the most? For the All Blacks, I'll miss pulling on that black jersey, the cloak, the majestic black jersey. It just means everything to me, and that's why I play rugby, is to pull the black jersey on. It's not, it's not a day goes by, I don't think of it. Um, I've pulled it on 113 times, and... Um, I don't want it to end. I didn't want to take the jersey off for as long as I, I could, but there was a point where we had to leave the change room and I, and I remember taking it off going, this is the last time I, I get to do this. I didn't want that feeling of being an All Black to finish. To be continued.